So you wanna get your first sponsor or brand deal, but you don't have enough followers. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I got my first paid sponsorship with under 10,000 followers on Instagram. By the end, you're gonna have the blueprint that I used and it's gonna help you make your social media way more attractive to brands and hopefully make them money. Wait a minute, who are you? I have created fitness content, motivational content, and some travel content for the last few years. And I've monetized my following now doing over a hundred collaborations with brands worldwide. And guess what? You do not need to be a massive influencer to start making money online, getting your first sponsorships and making brand deals. I got my first brand deal when I had, I still remember to this day, I had 4,257 followers on Instagram. And what was amazing about that is getting that email, seeing that it was real and a brand found me through my content was just amazing. It was the first time it happened to me. And after that, it happened time and time again once I learned the tips that I'm gonna give you in this video. All right, so let's jump right in. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it and give you the blueprint. So here's tip number one. Tip number one to get your first sponsorship or brand deal and just start making money on your social media is to focus on building a community, not building a following. So what I mean by that, Instagram especially, but all social media platforms, it's very easy for the user to press follow. It takes one second, it's free. Maybe they did like the video or like how your profile looks and all that stuff and they press follow but that doesn't mean that they're a true engaged member. Engagement with your followers is crucial, especially when you have a small social media account, like under 10,000 followers. Trust me, this is gonna make your profile so much more attractive to brands. They don't wanna work with people just with a high follower number. They wanna work with people with super high engagement and a community that loves and trusts them. I don't care if you have five followers or 5,000 or even 50K engage with them daily. So make this a priority. That looks like responding to comments of every single comment. Yes, every single one, especially if you're a small profile. Reply to DMs. I don't care if they're kind of pointless or whatever. This person is spending time sending you a message. The least you can do is reply back. Start to build a relationship through the DM. And also like their posts. If you're getting comments from, you know, Joe from Michigan and he has a hundred followers, but he's not an influencer by any means. He's just a user of Instagram who loves your content. Engage with him. He's going to see it. He's going to get excited to see that notification pop up on his post. And trust me, you're going to see Joe from Michigan in every single comment section of your posts moving forward. So that's a huge tip and that's something that I did and it really, really helped me. Another tip for building a community is just remember authenticity is key. Authentic was actually the number one word search on Miriam Webb dictionary last year because a lot of content creators are looking up what does authentic mean? Really what it means is being true to yourself, not being robotic, coming off as a real human being and just sharing that, right? Don't be picture perfect. Don't try to look a certain way or over edit photos and videos. Be yourself. This keeps your audience coming back for more over and over and over again. And you start to build a community that's loyal, that engages on all your content and that honestly just loves what you're doing and supports you. All right, tip number two. Focus on your niche. So I know niche has been talked about for years now in content creation, and it can be a little bit confusing. It just means category. What category or lane are you in in content creation? And you may be saying, Justin, I have no clue. I love so many things. So do I. This doesn't mean that you're gonna be stuck in this lane forever, but you absolutely should. And I highly recommend to, this is where I've seen the most change in my content finding brands that would come to me for sponsorships and brand deals. What I started doing was really focusing on fitness. It's one of my biggest passions. I started to really enjoy creating content about it. So as a smaller creator, I was just focused on what value can I give? And that kind of translated by showing tips, things not to do, beginner mistakes, just a lot of things that I learned in my own fitness journey, I was sharing it. And once I started getting some traction, I just doubled down. I 
really focused on fitness. So if you're in that limbo stage of, I really like fitness or I like fashion, lifestyle, travel, you can combine all those and know that I did eventually. I now do more fitness, motivational and travel. So I've kind of combined it all into one and made that its own like super niche. But as a smaller creator and you're trying to land your first deal, you wanna make sure that you align with the mission and values of your target brand. So let's just say you're a fitness athlete and you really wanna get sponsored by Gymshark. You gotta do your research to see what kind of athletes they sponsor, what kind of personality they show, what kind of content they post, and what you'll likely see is they show a lot of personality, talk to the camera, and that they post fitness content, right? A brand like that likely isn't gonna work with you if you're posting you know, travel content one day and then maybe a little bit of fitness content here and there, but it's not that valuable. Like they just wanna see that you can bring some value to their brand, right? So that's ultimately why a brand wants to work with a creator. You're gonna bring views and engagement and money to that company, but you're gonna benefit because you get to be a sponsored athlete and affiliate yourself with that brand. So all that to say, make sure your content reflects your niche. And when you're focusing on that niche, stay consistent with your content. This will show brands your commitment and that you're an active creator, not someone who posts once a month. It also keeps your audience engaged and the algorithm running, right? Every single time you post is an opportunity to blow up, to find more followers and to get more engagement. Moving on to tip number three, show your life and show your personality. Don't try to act like anybody else. Don't sh try to mimic somebody else's lifestyle. Show and document your life. So a good example of this is actually my first brand that reached out to me. Once I got in talks with their brand manager and I kind of just picked their brand, I was like, what made you guys choose me? I don't have the most followers in the world, right? And they were like, well, number one, you show your personality a lot. And they actually pointed out my story highlights on Instagram. They said we were absolutely sold once we clicked through your story highlights and we saw that you talk to the camera, that you were very creative with your content. They said some of the stories were so original that it stood out to us. We look at creators every single day and it didn't seem like fake or um, inauthentic is basically what they told me. So once they told me that, I was super happy. It just made me more motivated to post more stories, post more highlights, and that brands actually look at that stuff. So. Yes, they do look at that. They click through your profile. They don't want to work with just everybody. So they want to understand you a bit better than just like what your feed looks like. So the first three tips were basically how to make your brand and your identity online more attractive to potential brands and sponsorship opportunities. But the last two tips are going to be how you can actively seek out and reach out to brands that you really, really wanna work with. And once I started doing this, the rate of my brand partnerships started skyrocketing. And I think it's really because once I got my first sponsorship and my first brand deal, I realized that mentally, I felt like my value went up, right? Like I got some more confidence, I was like, wow, Someone in a company believes in me and is investing in me and is paying me, giving me free products. Okay, I bet there's others out there that would do the same. So I want you to steal these last two tips because you're actually gonna get your face and your name in front of way more brands doing this, which equals more opportunities. So tip number four, make a media kit, which is gonna showcase your value and your portfolio. A media kit is essential if you wanna come off as a professional and a content creator who's been there, done that, and you know what you're doing, right? So within a media kit, it's basically gonna be a one page document. I recommend making it on Canva where it showcases your metrics, your analytics, anything impressive about you. Maybe you have worked with brands before, make sure to mention those brands. If you haven't, you're just gonna try to fluff up the other things, right? The amount of uh, reach that you get monthly or weekly, if that's an impressive number, how many total reels views, how many total TikTok views, your most viral videos, just a one page showcase and portfolio of what your value is to that brand if they were to partner with you. But there is a big difference in a terrible beginner rookie looking media kit 
and a really well thought out professional media kit as well. Making a media kit is a whole other video in itself. If you're interested and you want help making your first media kit, just drop a comment below. I'll be happy to make a separate video about that or even talk with you one-on-one -on -one to run you through how I made my media kit, how it became very attractive to brands. And honestly, once I made a media kit, it just changed the game for me with how fast I got brand deals, how professional um, I came across and how much money I got paid from them as well. So a media kit is crucial. Just comment below if you want help with that. All right, tip number five is reaching out to brands. So you have your media kit, you've been focusing on your social media niche, you've been doing all the tips I've been telling you, now you really want to start actually reaching out to brands, pitching yourself, right? So the first thing you need to do is research your brands. I recommend making a short list of 20 brands that you really want to work with. I would make probably 10 of them much more realistic. So smaller brands, ones that you can see have partnered with or given affiliate codes to smaller creators around your size and put them on the list. Then the second group of 10 is going to be much more long-term goals. Like they're your dream brand, they're your favorite influencers that work with your that brand and everything. Splitting it up this way is just really good because the 10 give you a potential to at least start finding one to actually reach back out to you. And the 10 huge ones, you're kind of just throwing your rod and you're fishing and you're hoping that one catches. And if you do catch, that's a big fish, right? So you're gonna reel that baby in and hopefully get like a huge leap of faith from one of these companies. And I've definitely done it and it does work, but what you have to do is get really good at your pitch. So the pitch has to be short and sweet because remember these brands get a lot of these emails. You want to reach out, showcase your value, showcase your worth to them, and then your personal story. Now out of this 20, you're probably gonna get zero replies off the first email, I'm just being honest. Uh, this is for many reasons, because people are busy, especially people who work at brands or are the brand partnership manager. They're busy, they get a lot of these emails, right? Do not be afraid to follow up. As a smaller creator, that is the key, is that you follow up. But persistence really does pay off. I've had brands that have replied to me after three, sometimes like four or five emails, and it's the name of the game. You're gonna have to shoot your shot a lot. You're gonna have to send out a lot of emails. But while you're doing this, remember, you're following the other tips to make your brand more attractive and naturally, a brand could find you through social media too. And at the beginning, it's probably gonna be a little confusing. I know it was for me. So again, if you need any help, or you would like a video specifically on doing outreach to brands, just comment below, let me know. And if I see a few of those comments, I'm definitely gonna make that video. So hopefully this video helped you. Hopefully you get out there, start changing the game with your content, start making your personal brand way more attractive to brands that wanna come to you and offer you a deal, maybe a sponsorship, maybe it's free product, money. You take what you get at the beginning and then you're able to scale to the moon from there. And trust me, it absolutely happens very fast once you get your first one and you build up that confidence. So if you found this helpful, please drop me a sub. It would mean the world to me. And this is gonna be a community that I build here on YouTube, just like I've done over on other social media platforms. So I appreciate you watching. Subscribe, like, and comment. And I'm gonna see you guys very soon. Peace.